हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर सचिन अर्जुन गुरुळे असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम के टी एच एम कॉलेज नाशिक इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑफ एंटामोलॉजी फर्स्ट वी हॅव कम्प्लिटेड द टॉपिक इन्सेक्ट हेड एक्झोस्केलेटन बिलॉंग्स टू द चॅप्टर नंबर फोर मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ इन्सेक्ट नाव इन दिस लेक्चर we are going to discuss about the insect head endoskeleton which is also referred as the tentorium and we are going to learn the some modification of the head capsule so before start with the modification let us discuss what exactly the endoskeleton of the insect head is which is known as the tentorium now the tentorium is an endoskeleton of the head which is internal cuticular framework which is developed as a result of ingrowth and the fusion of some of the apodermal arms from that of the exoskeleton in the exoskeleton we have seen the anterior tentorial pits which are present on the clypeofrontal suture which is also referred as the epistomal suture from the inner side of this anterior tentorial pit there is a in growth which is developed which is the part of actually the apodems of the anterior tentorial pit which is going to form the part of the endoskeleton of the head and which is forming the tentorium now it serves to strengthen the stomodium the giving the strength to the stomodium and overall head capsule is the prime function of that tentorium and along with that this tentorium is also responsible for providing a site of attachment for the various kinds of the muscles which are coming from the different parts of their body the two pairs of the cuticular invaginations are referred to as anterior tentorial arms so these are anterior tentorial arm and the posterior tentorial arm the anterior arms in pterygoid insect takes their origin near or in the submarginal suture above the basis of mandibles now this is the position where the mandibles are present so this is the basal part of region where the mandibles are attached and here in this diagram you can see so this is a clypeofrontal suture or it is the epistomal suture where exactly this anterior tentorial arms in apterygoids they are originated and that develop inside by the invagination the point of origin are termed as the anterior tentorial pit so these are the anterior tentorial pits which are the point of origin of this anterior tentorial arm so here second in anterior tentorial pit and this one is a first so from this point the anterior tentorial arms are developed now similarly the posterior tentorial arms so these are the posterior tentorial arms which and arises from the posterior tentorial pit in this diagram here you can see this is a posterior tentorial pit from that posterior tentorial pit from the inner side again it shows the inward growth this gives rise to the formation of again arm which is referred as the posterior tentorial arm this posterior tentorial pit lying in the lower end of post occipital suture so this is the post occipital suture and as we have already learned in the previous lecture the posterior tentorial pits are always present on the post occipital suture so this is the point of origin for that posterior tentorial arm the position of the tentorial pits are marked externally in both the cases both anterior tentorial pit as well as posterior tentorial pit can be easily marked from the external side of any insect in many insect a pair of secondary outgrowth known as the dorsal arms so these are the dorsal arms which extend from the anterior tentorial arms though <clears throat> through the head wall near the antennal bases means this is the condition can be found in only some insect where at the middle region of an that anterior tentorial arm 
develops a dorsal tentorial arm and this dorsal tentorial arms they are shows a de uh, development or the growth towards the basis of antennae now suppose so this is the position of the base of antennae so that dorsal arms which are arising from the anterior tentorial arm and it reaches up to the base of antennae and this dorsal tentorial arm is responsible for providing a space for attachment of the muscles of the antennae the posterior tentorial arms are generally united to form a structure of the transverse bar being termed as the tentorial bridge here in this diagram you can see so this is a right side suppose and this one is a left side both they are having a posterior tentorial pit and from the posterior tentorial pit from inner side arises a posterior tentorial arm and these posterior tentorial arms they shows a inward growth and meanwhile the arms of the either side in the middle region they are get united with one another forming a transverse bar like structure and this transverse bar like structure is referred as the tentorial bridge the tentorium serves to protect the uh, provide the attachment to the ventral muscles of the mouth parts and it also supports the lower end of the cranial wall the antennal muscles also arising from the tentorium now when the dorsal tentorial arms are present at that time the muscles are originated from the antennae they are innervated into the dorsal tentorial arm and when dorsal tentorial arms are absent at that time the anterior tentorial arms they this is the point where the muscles from the antennae they are generally lost in the pterygo tentorium undergoes a numerous variation in many insect as in case of the arthroptera the central part of the composite tentorium becomes enlarged to form a broad plate this broad plate is referred as the carpora tentorium so this one is a carpora tentorium which is a broad plate like structure which is becomes enlarged in arthropteroid insect um, in other cases the anterior tentorial arm so these are the anterior tentorial arms and these are the posterior tentorial arms in some cases the anterior arms may be reduced or even they are absent leaving only a transverse tentorial bridge means in some cases this anterior tentorial arms are may be developed in other cases it may be reduced or in some cases it may be absent leaving only a somewhat transverse bridge here for that anterior uh, anterior tentorial arm while in other even tentorial bridge becomes reduced to a small lateral processes rarely however the tentorium may be completely lacking or absent in some insects now tentorium is bracing the epicranial wall bracing in the sense it gives a kind of the strength to the epicranial wall it serve as a site for attachment to the ventral adductor muscles of glandular appendages retractor muscles of hypopharynx and also to the ventral dilators of the stomodium in most of the insects the anterior muscles Uh, the antennal muscles are attached to the dorsal arm of the tentorium as i have already uh, asked that if the dorsal arm is there the antennal muscles are attached to here and if they are absent then and then the antennal muscles are reaches up to the anterior tentorial arm now in a pterygoid insect there is no homologous structure can be seen means you can say the tentorium therefore seems to be the important evolutionary advancement in the pterygoid insects only as this tentorium so called as a endoskeleton of the head is only and only present in a pterygoid insect and is a characteristic feature of the pterygoids and is completely absent or lacking among the pterygota it appears to be form of a tergal and sternal elements the anterior arms develop as a sternal apophysis and the posterior arm as a tergal apodems so this is about the endoskeleton of the insect head 
that is the tentorium now keep remember this is a very important topic for the examination also and frequently the diagram of the tentorium is will also be uh, asked for three or four marks so this is a relatively important topic for the examination is concerned so this is about the endoskeleton then the next part of this video is modification in head capsule of the insects the anterior frontoclypeal and the posterior lateral as well as ventral region of the head capsule are greatly modified in some insects and the three kinds of the modification can be seen into the head capsule of the insect the first modification is with the frontoclypeal region second is the hypostomal bridge and third one is the gula so let's see one by one first of all the frontoclypeal region the epistomal suture epistomal suture is also referred as the clypeofrontal suture when it is wanting or absent so this is the case can be found into the cockroach and some other insect in which the clypeal region can be separated from the frontal region by the position of anterior tentoral pits we have already discussed these things so here in this diagram you can uh, you can see easily so this is a labrum when clypeus the suture epistomal suture is completely absent even in this diagram also you can see the sutures are not clear at that time you have to see the position of the anterior tentoral pit for demarcating the boundary of clypeus from that of the frons now sometimes the frontal suture is also indistinct frontal suture that is the uh, two arms of the y that is referred as the frontal suture so these also indistinct in some cases for example in the hemiptera hymenoptera and lepidopteran larvae the frons is greatly reduced or even it is completely suppressed in these insect on the basis of position of dilators of the cybarium dilators of cybarium means these are the muscles which are coming from the anterior wall of the uh, cybarium these are referred as the dilators of cybarium or that of the buccal cavity so this region can be recognized the clypeal region particularly can be recognized now similarly the frontal region can be identified by the position of median ocelli and origin of the labral muscles so when the frontal suture is absent at that time we have to consider the position of median ocelli for demarcating uh, particularly the uh, frontal region so this is about the frontoclypeal region the next one or next modification is hypostomal bridge in hymenoptera heteroptera diptera and lepidopteran larvae labium is basally separated from the foramen magnum so this is a foramen magnum this foramen magnum in these cases the labium is basally separated due to the development of hypostomal lobes forming a ventral hypostomal bridge means so this is a hypostomal suture this hypostomal suture from the either side it continues or it joins with one another which is responsible for separating complete that labium from that of the occipital foramen so this bridge or when bridge is get formed in between the hypostomal sutures or the hypostomal lobe separating the labium from that of the occipital foramen so this bridge is referred as the hypostomal bridge in the lepidopteran larvae the hypostomal lobes do not unite together while in other insects they are fused at a middle forming a complete hypostomal bridge in order to close the foramen magnum ventrally means if the lobes are get develop which is forming the hypostomal bridge and due to the formation of the bridge here exactly which is responsible for separation of this labium from that of the occipital foramen or the foramen magnum and this bridge like structure can be referred as the hypostomal bridge so i have discussed this hypostomal bridge with the diagram of gula only okay then next modification is the gula gula is a ventral sclerotic plate of the head capsule 
separating the foramen magnum from that of the base of labium. So here there are two diagrams are there. The first diagram is the example of orthopteroid insect where there is no gula or gular modification is absent. While in the second diagram, the which is the diagram of a beetle that is Coleoptera, which is provided with a gula. So that gula gular modification we are going to discuss here. Now it is well developed in an insect for having the prognathous head in order to place the mouth in a forward direction. So in order to place the, all these mouth parts, particularly the labium in a forward projection, so they require a lengthening of that labium. And so that in these cases, the additional sclerite is developed at the base of labium. So this is a labium and this is the basal part of the labium which is known as the post labium actually and this is separated from that occipital foramen or the foramen magnum by a special sclerite which is known as a gula. Now this gula is only and only found among the insect which are generally having the prognathous head orientation. The gula is separated from that of the lat from laterally expanded post genie by the gular suture. So this one is a gular suture. Obviously, the suture which separates the gula that is referred as the gular suture. The gular suture are in fact the modified post occipital suture. Actually, so this region is referred as the post occipital suture. And when the gula is present, that modified suture of the post uh, post occiput is nothing but referred as the gular suture. The gula varies in a length as well as in a width in different species of the coleoptera and neuroptera because so this is gular modification is generally very common among the insect belongs to the coleoptera and the neuroptera which are provided with the prognathous head orientation. In many prognathous insects particularly in coleoptera the part of ventral extensions of the head lies posterior to the tentorial pit and in such a cases lower end of the post occipital suture which terminates if the pit appear to be drawn forward on the lower wall of the cranium and hence the labium and the gula which is uh, taking the place exactly ventral to the head region. In the space between the ventral parts of post occipital suture proximal to the tentorial pit is get form that is referred as the gula. In the certain coleopteran uh, larvae, the region which is occupied by the gula of the adult insect is entirely membranous and being merely an extension of the neck membrane in a vertebral verti ventral imagination of the head wall extending forward to the base of the labium. So here in this diagram also you can see so this is a gula and this is actually the foramen magnum and this part is known as the labium. So this to um, bring that labium in a forward projection and this additional sclerite is added at the base of the labium which is referred as the gula and this modification is nothing but a gula. So you can easily compare between these two diagram. So this is the diagram where the labium is directly having a contact with the foramen magnum or the occipital foramen where here the labium is restricted to the distal most part or the anterior part while their posterior part or the basal part is having the additional sclerite which is known as a gula and thus the labium is completely separated from that foramen magnum or the occipital foramen. So this is about the modifications of head capsule. Thank you. Thank you very much.